Ashokan by Frederick Chambliss Weems. Chapter 1 The raccoon ate the raw hamburger meat. It held the chunk between its paws. Don't get too close, the scientist said. His sons peered over the edge of the porch at the raccoon. Who wants another hamburger? Each of the three boys said they wanted more. I'll make you another one if you finish the one you have, Bob, said the scientist. Daddy, I want another, said Fred. But you have almost a whole hamburger left, said the scientist. But I want another, said Fred. He was four. Frank, who was eight, said, I'll have another. Do you want onions? Yes, please. Can I have onions, said Fred. I'll give you more onions. The scientist took the paper plate with Fred's hamburger on it and set it on the picnic bench near the grill. He cut some more onion slices and put the onions on top of the hamburger. I'm finished, said Bob, running toward the grill. All right, the scientist said. Would you like to make your hamburger this time? Yes, Bob shouted. His father handed him a chunk of ground round. The little six-year-old, as the raccoon had with his paws, held the chunk in his hands. He pushed his hands together hard. He showed his father the patty. That patty's very thin, said the scientist. I'll have to peel it off your hands. He did this. Do you want onions, Bobby? The boy nodded three times. The scientist took a handful of the onions he'd chopped, put them on the patty, and rolled the patty and the onions into a ball. You made, a little, you made it a little too flat to mix the onions in, so I'm making this again. He held out the ball. Here, hit that with the palm of your hand. The boy hit the patty, the scientist held out, flattening it a little. There, said the scientist. He put the hamburger on the grill. Can I feed the raccoon, Frank asked. The scientist looked over his shoulder. Throw him a little, but stay away from him. We've already fed him. The purple darkness of the sky blended perfectly with the mountain now. The scientist said the word, while Purgus knocked, and felt the warmth of the grill. Frank, he said. Yes, Daddy? What did Thomas Mann call one of those? You mean, what's the German for hamburger? No, that, said the scientist. With his left hand, which held a two-pronged fork, he made a sweeping gesture. Der Zauberberg, said Frank. What would hamburger be, said his father. Frank said, I don't know. The scientist said, I'm hamburger. I'll ask you another, he said. What would a magic hamburger be? Der Zauberberger? The scientist laughed. The raccoon is under the house, shouted Fred. He's gone to bed, said the scientist. He's under the porch, said Bob. Leave him be, said the scientist. It will be time for your bed soon. How does he know when it's time to go to sleep, said Bob. The scientist flipped over the burger. He doesn't know, actually. But it always goes to sleep at the same time. Always, said the scientist. He's an animal, said Frank. A raccoon is a very intelligent animal, but he doesn't plan anything. But he knows we're always out here when it gets dark. A coal burst in the grill. No, said the scientist. He doesn't know that. He's used to it. First, the smell drew him. It's probably drawn a lot of little animals who are sitting out there. But he'd have never drawn near if we hadn't thrown food for him. Remember the first few days? He took the food and went away. Now he is habituated to this. What does habituated mean, said Frank? He's gotten used to a pattern. He doesn't calculate our return. He can't help coming here. Headlights shone on the house and moved across it. The scientist put the fork under the burger and lifted it. Get a bun, Frank, he said. Who's here, said Frank. The gravel crunched as the car climbed up the hill. The scientist took a bun from the bag and put it on the hamburger. Take your burger, Frank. The boy took the hamburger. He ate a bite. Fred peered under the porch. Bob put more onions on his hamburger. The car door slammed. Weems, said an authoritative voice. Damn, shouted the scientist. Doggy damn, it's Whitson. I thought it was a carload of birchers. It's a carload of booze, Weems. Help me get it out of the trunk. But who is the gargoyle in the back? That's me, Weems, said the person in the back, leaning forward and sticking his head out the front window. Chambliss, I thought as much. Come on in. You know how much I'd like to, Weems, but Archer will be wearing out the carpet if we don't get there in time for his mother's dinner. You're going dressed like that? Oh, we're not going, Weems. But waiting for us is Archer's excuse for delaying being there. He'll let us in and then take the car. You'll see the lot of us tomorrow. 
I wouldn't expect otherwise, said Weems. Well, Weems, said Whitson, returning from the porch, don't trip over the box of scotch. You're not bringing any to Archer's? It's tea and warm milk there tonight. It's his mother's birthday. Unfortunately, he has to make a speech. He has to be at the Great Chalet by nine, said Chambliss, still leaning forward in the back seat. Isn't that late for an old lady's birthday party? That's it exactly. Chambliss said, We've got a book for you, Weems. That's right, said Whitson. Joy ran halfway down Riverside Drive and handed it to us at the traffic light. Joseph Unstein Bruder, said the scientist. He recited the opening line in German. Very deep is the well of the past. Should we not call it bottomless? Is that what you said to the German prisoners, Weems? Whitson said. I was the candy kid, said the scientist. Daddy! The scientist looked at his third son. Can I give Raccoon my hamburger? He ate already, Fred. Is that how well you cook, Weems? said Archer. Weems, we're going. Whitson got in the car. We'll try to bring Chambliss tomorrow if he doesn't stay in bed all afternoon. The scientist said, if he can't sleep after his supper with the D.A.R., he's hopeless. He's hopeless if he can't sleep during it, said Whitson. The car backed slowly down the hill. What's the D.A.R., said Frank, who had been standing there the whole time. Chambliss's mother and friends. But what's it stand for? Diamonds and rubies. A never stands for and in an acronym. You're too smart for me, Frank. Daddy. Okay. It's Daughters of the American Revolution. Frank said, it should be great-granddaughters of the American Revolution. How old do you think she'd be if she were born in 1776, said the scientist. 288, said Frank. No, said the scientist, but you're partially right. 100, 188. Say 188, not and 88. Okay. Okay, boys, said the scientist. It's bedtime.